I told my mom, I'm absolutely over the moon that nobody took me seriously in the beginning. How many screenplays have you written? I have lost count. <laughs> I have lost count. Um, more than 50. More than 50. I can say that. Feature screenplays or a mixture of shorts and features? Um, no, those are all, those will be all features. Mixture of features, mixture of pilots, you know. When did you write your first feature screenplay? Maybe about 18, 19. And it was, <laughs> it was called Autacious <laughs> was the name of it. And nobody understood, like, what is this? And I had to explain what Autacious meant and... Uh, but it was a vampire script, yeah. Oh, okay. And you were in Georgia at the time? I was in Georgia, yeah. Okay. And, it, and I, I think at that time I hadn't learned the importance of, of titles, you know. Titles have to be strong and understandable and have sometimes a couple of different meanings. You know, they can't just be self-indulgent, you know. And uh, everything I wrote had some weird thing that I'd learned um, but that was by far the weirdest title I think I came up with, which was Autacious. What does it actually mean? To live vicariously through someone or something like a parasite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Codependency? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's really what it was about, about this vampire needing this guy to come to fruition, you know, Interesting. to come to be. What was your writing process like on that first screenplay? Making sure uh, that the names were indented properly and, you know, it, making sure spacing was appropriate and the proper font was being used. I was, it was so much still a learning process of just what went into writing a, a screenplay um, from a formatting standpoint, not a story structure standpoint. So at that point, I hadn't even gotten into really into the craft. It was still very much just, how do I make this look professional? So. How long did it take you to finish that screenplay? Oh, five days. Oh, wow. Okay. Five days. In the beginning, I wrote screenplays in a week or less. In a week or less. Because I didn't know what I didn't know. Like, once you understand what the craft really is and how you how you get, how you move an audience the way you need to move them, how do you get out information without it being very convoluted or heavy handed? How do you, how do you get information across both in text and subtext? Like once you start getting into that and story structure, it's, it, it complicates things and there's no way that you're writing a script in a week. And if you do, and it reads very well, I'm, I'm impressed, I'm impressed, because it's a lot of work that goes into it. Just in terms of, just outlining takes me about a week or, or more. Just outlining it, just to understand what's going on in a very like one page kind of way. It takes a while, so. Back then I didn't know that. So you, when, you, when you don't know what you don't know, you just, you plow right through it and you're like, I'm done, and you drop it on the desk. And, and for some reason, I think I think it's all because the industry was so new to Georgia in the in the late '90s, you know, early 2000s, like late '90s, really. And that's where I really started to you know get a lot of work, and I'm turning in stuff. That agent, I don't, I knew that he would certainly represented other writers, and but I don't, I don't think he ever represented anybody who was successful. Because there's no way you could if you were receiving those kind of screenplays and just being like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, that's awesome. It's, there was no structure. I look back sometimes on some of the things I've written, like, what was I thinking? And it's just because you, you didn't know. You, you don't know what you don't know. And so you're, you're constantly learning every time. And especially when you seek knowledge and you, you don't have that vanity to believe that you're the best at something. I never believe that I'm the best at anything other than being me, that that's really it. And I'm even sometimes struggling with that, right? So, so I'm constantly looking at ways to improve. And, and as I began to understand story structure and stuff of like that, my, my stories got better. But it took a while 
for me to get to the place where I am now, where I feel, I feel as though I'm creating very um, complete stories, you know, where you don't feel at the end like, what? No, I'm just missing something. I just can't figure out what it is. You know, I feel like my stories are very complete now. I feel they tell a complete story and all the arcs are completed and they're completed skillfully. I'm always just looking to figure out how to write a better script the next time. How do I, how do I write a better script the next time? And then I start, well, okay, I did this last time. And what do I improve? What didn't I know that I know now? And, you know, and that's how you continue to grow. But back then, script in a week was nothing. Do you think it would have helped if you had this delusion where you thought your thing was the greatest or your writing was the greatest? You know how some people, they are able to convince everybody to that somehow? I don't know. I know, I know people like that. Yeah. I know people like that. And, <clears throat> and don't get me wrong. I don't mean I know people like that who don't work. I know people like that who are working. And some of the conversations I've heard have been hilarious because this person has... I think in the arts, because it is it is so much, it is so personal. Even if it's supposed to be business, it's really personal. You create something, it came from you, you birthed it, right? And then to hear somebody look at two pages and go, that's garbage, what else you got? Uh, it, you, you either have to be able to accept it and say that's not for them, or you become calloused and you become, uh, you develop a sense of an inflated ego. And I think that if you if you develop the inflated ego, which I think is the go-to, you you start stunting your growth. As a matter of fact, I'd venture to say you start regressing. Because when the going gets tough, you're gonna fall back on the things you know and you've never bothered to learn anything new. You're just gonna fall back on the things that you think have worked. And I see that a lot in the industry. I don't think that's helpful at all. I think I think it's to your detriment. Oh, and, and when I say detriment, I don't mean detriment in terms of, of your, your marketability. I, I mean in terms of your true ability to grow and become your best you. I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's detrimental. With Autatius, did you ever try to sell it? Yes. Sadly. <laughs> the, the agent did try to sell it and, you know, he tried very hard. And I don't blame anybody from not, for not buying it. As a matter of fact, I have told this to... Uh, Everyone, including my mom, who thinks I'm the absolute best. I told my mom I'm absolutely over the moon that nobody took me seriously in the beginning. Because if they had, and I had made any of the number of screenplays that I had written in the, in the past, in, my, in the very beginning, they would have laughed me out of here and I would have never gotten another job. I think I would have never reached a point where I felt as though I could take you know, my career into my own hands. I never would have gotten there because I think at that age, if that happens to you, you're done. I think you're done. If somebody, if somebody cuts your legs off at 20, I think your legs are just gone. I think you don't have the stomach for it. I see too many people that come to LA and they think they're gonna be, and then they get their legs cut out from under them and they go back to where they came from and they are no longer interested in the business at all. So I'm very fortunate that nobody took me serious except that one agent, <laughs> very serious. I mean, I think everything happened exactly how it was supposed to. I, on the one assignment that I was sent out on and taken seriously, and it was through a sample, not from me writing anything for that specific pilot, it was just from a sample of my writing in general. And that's how I was on, you know, uh, Young Americans. But if it had, can you imagine if I, if they had have wanted a submission, like a TV show I'd written and I submitted something and was like, yeah, here, take a look at this. Oh, get out of here. That's what would have happened. It, I was too green. I didn't know enough. So.